this is the mid sagittal section of the pelvis where you can see this is the pubic symphysis this is the urinary bladder this is the uterus and that this is the pouch pouch of douglas containing coils of intestine and the vertebra sacral vertebra the ovary are the female gonad situated on the each side of uterus and is attached to the posterior layer this is the broad ligament and it is attached to the posterior layer of the broad ligament it is just almond shaped dull gray in color covered by the cubical epithelium puberty the surface of the ovary is smooth but after repeated ovulation the surface become irregular so this in this specimen you can see the irregular surface of the ovary all anatomical relation of the ovary is described in the nulliparous specimen so this ovary has two ends tubal end and the uterine end two border one is the anterior or the meso ovarian border and other is the posterior border or the free border the tubal end is directed upwards and it arches over this uh, you can see the fallopian tube is arching over the tubal end there is a presence of the attachment of the ovarian fem fimbri this ovarian fimbri is attached to the tubal end of the ovary uterine end is connected to the lateral angle of the uterus by this ligament known as ligament of ovary this ligament of ovary is the remnant of the upper part of gubernaculum the anterior border gives attachment to the posterior layer of broad ligament so this is the posterior layer of broad ligament it is attached to the posterior layer of broad ligament in its anterior part and there is this this attachment part is known as meso ovarian so this hole is the meso ovarian where it is the hilum for the passage of the blood vessels there is a transition between the flattened epithelium of the mesothelium that is the simple squamous epithelium of mesothelium to the cubical epithelium of the ovary so this is the line of transition which is also known as white line of furre posterior border which is free the ovary is supplied by the ovarian artery that is coming through this suspensory ligament or infundibulo pelvic ligament from here it passes to the mesosalpinx and to the meso ovarian and it gives its ovarian artery that is the branch of abdominal aorta the venous drainage forms the pampini flex pampiniform plexus from here it drain back to the it goes through the suspensory ligament and the right ovarian vein drains into the inferior vena cava whereas the left ovarian vein it drains into the left renal vein this is the fallopian tube or the uterine tube it extends from the lateral angle of the uterus till the lateral pelvic wall it is the pair of duct which convey the ova from the ovary to the uterine cavity each fallopian tube is 10 cm long and situated in the free upper margin of the broad ligament so in the broad ligament this is the free upper margin this hole is the broad ligament from lateral to medial it is divided into the four parts that is the infundibulum ampulla isthmus and the intramural part the infundibular part has a opening known as abdominal ostium so this is the there is a opening pelvic or the abdominal ostium which is situated at the lateral end of this uterine tube and this peritoneal cavity in the female is a open sac this opening is just 3 mm in diameter and it presents number of number of fimbriated end and one of the fimbria which is very long is known as ovarian fimbria so these all are the fimbriated ends of the infundibulum one of the fimbria is very long and this is known as ovarian fimbria which is attached to the upper pole of the ovary it is just thin wall dilated and tortuous measuring only 5 cm in length fertilization of ovary takes place in this ampulla and the transport of the zygote from the ampulla to the uterus is facilitated by the ciliated 
ciliary beads and the peristalsis of the tube. After ampulla, there is the presence of isthmus. This isthmus, it is cord-like. You can find this is like thick, cord-like. Because the musculature is thicker than the size of the lumen. And the length of the isthmus is 3 cm. Last part is the intramural part. It is just 1 cm long and 1 mm in diameter. And it traverses the musculature of the uterus. That is, it is present inside. And at the junction of the fundus and the body, there is an opening. This is the intramural part. This fallopoint tube, it drains into pre-aortic and a para aortic group of lymph nodes. But this intramural part of the fallopoint tube, it drains with along with the round ligament of uterus to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. So this both has a different lymphatic drainage than the rest of the fallopoint tube. Uterus is thick, hollow, muscular organ. It is situated obliquely in the lesser pelvis, behind the urinary bladder and in front of rectum and sigmoid colon. These two part that is the expanded part and the narrow part is divided by this constricted isthmus. It is 7.5 cm long, 5 cm in breadth and 2.5 cm in thickness. It is divided into upper expanded part called the body and the lower narrow part called as cervix. The forward bending of the uterus relative to the vagina is known as antiversion. So the long axis of the vagina, this is the vagina, so this is the long axis of vagina, it forms an angle of 90 degree to the long axis of the uterus. So this is known as angle of antiversion. This uterus is also slightly flexed at the level of internal os. So the long axis of the cervix, it makes an angle of 125 degree with the long axis of the uterus. So this is known as angle of antiflexion. So this angle of antiversion and antiflexion is very important so that this uterus, the bulky uterus does not get prolapsed through the vagina. So this angle is always required for the normal positioning of the uterus. The fundus is formed by the free upper end of the uterus where it is present above the opening of this fallopoint tube. So this small part which is covered by peritoneum and it is doom separate and this is the fundus part of the uterus. Below the fundus, this is the body. The body has anterior surface and the posterior surface. The anterior or the vesical surface of the body is flat. It is related to the urinary bladder in front and it is covered by peritoneum. So anterior surface is all covered by peritoneum. It forms the posterior wall of the uterovesical pouch. So you can see this is the pouch and the body forms the posterior wall of this whole pouch. The posterior or the intestinal surface is convex and it is related to the coils of the terminal ileum, sigmoid colon and it is covered with the peritoneum and forms the anterior wall of recto uterine pouch. So you can see this is all the pouch, this is all the pouch. So this pouch, recto uterine pouch, the anterior wall is formed by the posterior surface of the uterus. The lateral border of the uterus, it is rounded and it gives, it gives attachment to this broad ligament. So this is the anterior surface of broad ligament, this is the posterior surface of broad ligament. So whole the lateral border gives attachment to this broad ligament. The fallopian tube opens at the upper end of this lateral border and there is attachment of this round ligament of uterus anterior inferior to the fallopian tube and the ligament of ovary posterior inferior to this fallopian tube. So this is ligament of ovary. The uterine artery ascends in the two layers of the broad ligament at this lateral border of the uterus. In this sagittal section, the cavity of the body of the ca cavity of this body looks like a slit as it is compressed from anterior and the posterior surface. 
so this body there is a presence of the cavity is in the slit you can also see the lumen of the uterine artery it's patent the lower cylindrical part of the uterus which is less mobile and it is just 2.5 cm in length and this is known as the cervix the lower part of the cervix projects into this vagina so the cervix is again divided into two part the one that is projecting into the vagina is known as ectocervix and the part that is present above the ectocervix is the endocervix the part present at the vagina is known as the vaginal part and the part above it it is also called as supravaginal part or the endocervix Uh, there is a transition of the lining epithelium in this endocervix and ectocervix the lining epithelium is simple columnar epithelium in the endocervix and it when it comes to the vaginal cavity the lining epithelium matches with the vagina forming the stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium so this is more prone for carcinomatous change as there is a transition the cervix opens into the vagina by this external os this external os is round and circular in case of nulliparous women and in multiparous you can find there is the anterior lip and the posterior lip of the external os so by through the opening of internal os the cervical canal communicate with the body of the uterus and through external os it communicate with the vagina the vagina is a fibromuscular canal extending from the vulva to the uterus it is situated between the bladder and the rectum and below there is a anal canal so this is whole is the vagina the posterior wall of vagina is longer than the anterior wall that is the posterior wall is 10 cm long it extends till here and the anterior wall is just 8 cm long the diameter of the vagina increases from below upwards the upper end of vagina is 5 cm in diameter and the lower end is 2.5 cm the lumen is circular at the upper end because the protrusion because of this protrusion of the cervix but below but below the cervix the anterior wall and the posterior wall are in close contact now because of this protrusion of the cervix into the vagina there is presence of the spaces known as fornices so the anterior fornix is the shallowest one the posterior fornix is the deepest one and the lateral fornix there is right lateral and the left lateral fornix is present in the whole vaginal wall this of this posterior fornix is that it is deep and while doing per vaginal examination through posterior fornix there is a close position of this pouch of douglas so any fluid if it is accumulated here can be taken out through this posterior fornix so this ligament of uterus i'll show the structure that are seen in this specimen the peritoneal ligaments are the anterior ligament so this anterior ligament consists of the utero vesical fold the posterior ligament which consists of the recto vaginal fold of peritoneum and there is a right this is the right and the left broad ligament this ovary is attached to the posterior surface of the broad ligament through this meso ovarian so this one structure is the meso ovarian the ligament of ovary passes from the lower pole of the ovary to the lateral angle of uterus which is the remnant of the upper end of the gubernaculum the part of broad ligament lying between this uterine tube lying between this uterine tube and the ligament of ovary is known as mesosalphinx so this hole is the mesosalphinx below the attachment of this ligament of ovary is known as mesometrium the part of the broad ligament from the upper pole of the ovary and the infundibulum of this fallopian tube to the lateral pelvic wall is called as suspensory ligament of ovary or the infundibulum pelvic ligament support of the uterus one is this round ligament of the uterus this is a fibromuscular band which is 10 to 12 cm length in between the two layers of the broad ligament it passes through this deep inguinal ring passes through the inguinal canal and then gets attachment to the labia majora by some fibromuscular band
an angle of antiversion is maintained by this mainly by this round ligament. So during pregnancy, because of the stretching of this round ligament, the person they complain of pain in the labia majora. Ligament, true ligament is this transverse cervical ligament. So this is the condensation of the endopelvic fascia on each side of the cervix and it connects the lateral aspect of the uh, cervix and the vagina to the lateral pelvic wall and this is the also known as ligament of McIndroe.